Because we all start somewhere, and usually most people start from the ground up, dreaming, planning, building that career path, or starting a new business step by step or brick by brick. Regardless of where you start, when you do start, how do you do it? How do you navigate the challenges that life throws at you? How do you avoid making mistakes or dodge those bullets? Who's there on your team to help? Well, my guests come from various backgrounds, different countries, and we have an opportunity and the honor to hear their stories. We can ask advice. We learn from their mistakes and we're inspired as well. We get to learn from some of the most successful people and we talk about all kinds of things, life, family, hope careers, business and wellness strategies, whatever comes up. Some of my guests are CEOs or coaches, engineers or educators, journalists, authors, singers, tech gurus, investors, and an occasional celebrity or two. I'm excited because today we have Nenny Carolina Chassin, the Senior Managing Partner at Automate Your Success Coaching. She's an award-winning software engineer, recording artist, a life and business coach, and investor. Nenny is also a certified marketing, branding, and digital content creation expert, as well as a mentor in fitness, health, and nutrition. And she's a speaker and published author. She turns visions into reality by coaching individuals, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world to automate their business and optimize their life so they may operate at peak performance and maximize their growth online and off. Nenny was born in Venezuela. Then she came to the U.S. to continue her career as a software engineer. But she's also a gospel and jazz singer and thrived while touring the world for 20 years. She then decided to move to Paris and launched her coaching. Six years later, she returned to the U.S. during the pandemic where she settled in Los Angeles to continue her work. Here she is. And Nenny, welcome. Welcome to From the Ground Up. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And uh, I think I'm going to record it and then present it every single time because it was excellent. I loved it. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I appreciate your time. And I'm really excited to get down into the nitty gritty. Um, if you don't mind, simply because some of our viewers, this, this may be their first time, right, that they watch the show or that they're joining us. So if you don't mind, in your own words, you know, a lot of our viewers are world travelers like us. So when you first came to the U.S., what was your first impression? Obviously, there's a there's a cultural difference. Uh, but you're in the tech world. And so what was your first, you know, gut reaction to your arrival here? Well, the first reaction when you're coming from a third world country, living there or studying there, the first impression is how much information is available for you for free everywhere. So I think the first gut reaction as a, an engineer and as a business owner and everything was how much information was available for us to do anything for doing real estate all the information was out there on the web for doing for for any advances in technology there were free newspapers magazines in all the different booths in the street and i was consuming them like crazy there there were so many books on technology and advanced things in boston because that's where i was for from mit harvard that i could just lose myself in the live in the in the libraries and also in the bookstores, just in the bookstores, you can just spend all day long reading about the tech, the new tech that was going on on at the time. And uh, now of course we have the web, but at the time the web wasn't really, in 1995 when I migrated, that wasn't really available. So that was really the first shock, how much information was available to make better decisions and to learn and grow. That's 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 wonderful. Thank you for sharing that perspective. And and when you did arrive, you know, you landed in Boston, as you said, what did you envision your life was going to be? Did you have, you know, sometimes we, I don't want to say we can foretell the future, but sometimes we know that something draws us to a place or draws us to travel. And sometimes we just have that feeling of this is where I'm supposed to be. 
what did you envision when you landed in Boston? Well, Boston was a very practical choice because of the circumstance and the help that I was going to have upon arrival. So that was very critical for me to choose that city. It had both music and technology available for me to develop and to prosper and to grow. And the second thing, we had some friends that I knew that could give us a help, just set settling and just until we got everything done. So that was uh, the two um, factors that, that got me there, but it wasn't my first choice of city. Like, like if you wanted to, if I wanted to choose a city, I think for whatever it, it wasn't the city I wanted to go. I wanted to go to Australia actually, or I wanted to go to London or back to London or something like that. But uh, it just happened to be Boston, the, the, the place where the doors opened and said, this is good. I can stay here. And of course the perspective to what I envisioned once I landed is so many opportunities for software. First of all, me, I was going crazy with all the opportunities. I was applying to different things. I had been working for the, I, I was the director of the computer department at the Stock Exchange in Venezuela. And we worked with the Stock Exchange software from Boston Stock Exchange and Vancouver Stock Exchange. Okay. So I knew how to, how to work with that software and design it, maintain it. So I reached out to the financial world first. Sure. But um, by then, actually, because of my medical background with my dad being a doctor and working at the lab with him, uh, the medical bio, biotech uh, opened up for me. So I went into software for the health industry. And uh, that was great. And then as soon as I arrived in Boston, I realized the potential for music with Berkeley College of Music, which I was actually living very ne- right next to it. Uh-huh. The 20 something years I lived there, I was right next to Berkeley College of Music. Oh. So I was involved in all the music all around and yeah. all my friends there were going to Berkeley. So I was going to Berkeley for like three years in their classes. Right. It was really fantastic. So I was able to three one month after I think I already had joined a choir, um, gotten to create my band. I was performing already. I produced uh, and the album for the choir. I recorded it, produced it, and uh, and released and distributed it. So it was really fantastic, and I did that. And then I launched my 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 band as well, my jazz band, which actually my guitar player was my boss at the computer <laughs> com- company. And Perfect. He went, uh, he went to Berkeley. So he was a guitarist. He was incredible. He is incredible. And we still release music together until this day. During the pandemic, we released two singles together um, of songs we had done for so many years. So it's it, Boston was really pivotal. Like, so what I envisioned as a musician and an engineer, it really came true. That's, that's wonderful. And I think that's, you know, the more we get to learn from each other, the more I get to know you, I just realized, I mean, we've had incredible conversations before this one. There's so much that we have in common and I just love it. I, I really, really enjoy these conversations and I think our viewers will too, because sometimes there's this idea that you're an artist or a musician, but you know, you can't live or work in the real corporate world. And, and I, I just don't agree with that, <laughs> but I also, both, definitely. Yeah, exactly. And I also wanted to ask you to share with us, if you don't mind, is what were the major differences that you experienced that you found, for example, being a software engineer in Venezuela, doing what you were doing there. And then the difference, you know, of, I, and I'm talking about like the workplace difference. Is is there a difference? Well, yeah, it was definitely very different. Uh, but for, it was interesting because it was different for two reasons, for the social aspect and and also for the technical aspect. In terms of the social aspect and cultural aspect, and this is actually something that is not true in, in, in the United States, the stock exchange. I was engineer. I was an engineer in the stock exchange, and was, you know, directing the whole computer department. I installed, maintained the systems, and trained the brokers on remote stations and everything. So all the staff was were females. All the engineers were females. So I was when I went to school, the majority were females. So I was in a very female world for engineering. Right. And when I came to United States, it was I was the only female. 
Right. So uh, that was a big, I didn't notice that it would be a contrast because I just like, okay, whatever, I landed there. there was, right. It just happened to be the only female. I didn't think that, I thought that maybe there were more females, but it, I soon realized that there weren't very many females in the engineering world. And I was pretty much the, very much the only programmer or developer for many, many years in the company. For 15 years, I worked there. Right. Then I continued on with the original founder, and I went on with him later for three more years in his other company. So, and and we were more half and half uh, female and male. So that was the first thing in terms of culture. Right. The clients were mass male and the, the workers were all female. Everybody at the stock exchange were all females, the director, the closer, the everybody. So that was interesting. So I was very supported in a way as a female, as a woman, I was very supported, you know, mm-hmm. we were, it was great. So we were all integrated, you know, whatever with the culture. The second part was the technical part. We had trouble getting information over there in Venezuela, of course, and here, in the United States, we have so much access to incredible technologies that were coming up. So we were doing so many avant-garde things here that we couldn't really do over there. Over there, we're just catching up and using what was already created. Sure. And things were coming late. And here, we were, as a software developer for digital uh, clinic, electronic clinical trials, we were the first ones in the world to create electronic clinical trials at the time. So it's so that's very different, right? Like how you innovate in in Boston and everybody in Boston is doing something new, something creative. And uh, that was um, at at the professional technical level. That was very different, too. Sure. Quite the contrast. Very much so. Um, Let's move on. (laughs) Everybody around me was MIT graduate. And I was just like, you you know, university graduate from computer science in in Venezuela so it was it was just as good I was just at their level but because it was a really it's a really hard training there sure um, because you have to really use everything that you have and you pretty much become um, an expert at being resourceful and finding everything for your for your for whatever problem you have you know sure. that's what the university teaches you there whereas here you have innovation and technology so it's very different yeah. I enjoyed both good and and I'm sure that I mean that helps you because it just gives you that well-rounded approach to what it is that you do um, let's let's move into your your coaching world so what advice do you give your clients right like let's say the top three tips that you have shared with your clients for increasing their business after this whole lockdown pandemic situation that we've all had to navigate through? Well, the first of all is, do they have any digital presence? Number one, you have to have a digital presence for your business. If you don't have a digital presence, you're not on social media marketing, if you're not capitalizing on that, you're losing big time and you don't know how to adapt to the new world. The new world really uses everything digital, Zooms, digital marketing and branding, and you better get on that. If you're not on it, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna work. So that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Number two, make sure that you have a clear message and the content that you provide to the customers online is very clear and focus on results and benefits. Focusing on the what and the how does not help you at all. So talking about problems doesn't help you at all either. So if you're saying, oh, if you have this problem and you feel this bad thing, and that does not give you the optimized way for marketing and selling. Focus on the results and the benefits, the solutions that you're offering to solve the problems, not focus on the problems. Because people that have problems, they actually embarrassed or shamed to come to you for the problems. So that's why, that's the reason why. So if you, you can always say, oh, you know, if you feel sad, come to my business. If you feel in pain, come to my business. No, should come to my business because I give you better solutions. I give you more growth. I give you less pain. I give you uh, happiness. I give you what anything 
right. from the positive and the benefit the benefits point of view and results because that's what's really going to be differentiating them and number three just do your do your due diligence and follow up and follow through so all the leads follow up and i am guilty of not following as fa as fast as i, as I <laughs> Right. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm saying this and I do the other two very well, but I don't do the follow up and the follow through as fast and as diligently as I would like it to be. Sure, sure. And if you have a team that can do it for you also is great, but that is so important to follow up on leads because leads, once it's hot, it just goes cold really fast. So you yeah. have to really do it fast. The different communications that I've had recently from all the leads of new businesses that I'm trying to connect with, it they've, they've been I've been having a lot of positive results because I've connected with them really fast. Hey, let's meet, let's call, let's do this, and the the conversations are fresh. They just saw saw you. They just saw some posts. They just talked to you. So they're gonna remember, right. and they're gonna be more likely to do business with you. Like imprinting, right? Imprinting on their on their consciousness. Yeah, the more you are in their their circle, the more you are in their field, then the more they're going to do business with you. Yeah. Yes. I want to go back to you know in your introduction. A lot of people. I get this. I'm. I can only assume that you get this too. I get. Well, you you're doing so many things. How do you do it? How do you? manage all the different businesses aspects of business that they and including your creativity how do you personally what's your tip there to manage everything because we're not the only ones that are doing all these different projects simultaneously right i know for me i'm not always the best organized but i am pretty much organized because i used to be a project manager right i take and bring those skill sets when I had to manage 50, 60 projects all at once, I learned how to manage things. It doesn't mean like you, you know, it doesn't mean that I do it well all the time. Optimized, yeah. <laughs> but I do have systems in place. I do have my own way to keep myself organized to meet deadlines. So how do you do it with all the things that you do plus your music? Yeah, I think that the background in engineering really gave me a solid way to manage my life. Um, even before, I guess, be, it, it, it's about a little bit of the right brain, left brain kind of balance, right? Like when when you have, and maybe I want to go back a little bit of the influence that you have from your background, like your parents, and that influences how you manage your life, right? So, yes, I did go for training and school. Uh, for software engineering, and that kind of gives you a, a mindset or an uh, unconscious way of doing things. You you have a plan, you put it together. It's like the algorithms, right? You have a, a logical system that you follow in steps, and then you have a result. And then you have to track it in a paper or in a digital mode. So, of course, because of my training, I do, I have a lot of lists of things. You know, I have, okay, I have a list of my... I have places where I keep list of values. I have places where I keep list of clients. I have places I keep list of the people I want to follow up, the projects. I have a structure in my day with an agenda for my 30-day goal, and I follow every day what are the goals, my transactional tasks, my transformational tasks, what are the three most important goals for the day. So having a, a daily routine like that for what you're going to follow every day. Of course, that makes a difference. That comes from my background. But I would say that my parents, my mom and my dad, one left brain, one right brain, um, my dad really taught me how to keep things. And he used to have a folder with everything organized by category. And here's the life insurance, and here are the checks, and here are the financials, and here's, I saw my dad doing this all his life, and all I could wait is, I want to be in the workforce so I can have one of those accordion file organizers. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the, because we didn't have computers then, right? Right, right. And, and Yeah. 
for and me, so of course when I, when I went to work with my dad in the yeah. hospital as his secretary I loved all the patient files all organized in the hospital how they tracked what each patient had and how they did all the business side and the the invoices I used to have in my night table forms of the banks and the the hospital just to play with it. I mean, it was just an obsession. So I think I got that from my dad's. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. From my dad. So if you say, how do you do it? Well, you have to have some sort of base right. of organization. Right. I got it from my family, my dad, you know, so in seeing this was really interesting to me, how to organize things. This goes here, this goes there. And in the computer is that's how it is. I have folders, everything's mm -hmm. organized. So if you don't have things organized in your folders, in your closet, it right. trickles down from life to business, yeah. right? Absolutely. So you, so you have to have an organized life to have an organized business. I know that some people say, oh, my li the life, Elon Musk's personal life is crazy, but he's an incredible entrepreneur. Sure, but I'm sure that his closet is organized. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Right. <laughs> well, and I remember, you know, the there's there's that whole right like I'm, I'm an older generation I still use what we used to call back in the day the tickler file you know when I didn't get the result that I wanted on something I would move it to the next week or the next month as the reminder and I would just I would keep rotating that until I accomplished whatever it was that I needed to accomplish I still do that not not physically with pen and paper, but I do that with my calendar, with my alarms, you know, all of that. It's, yeah. it was that migration. It took me a while. I'll be the first to admit it was hard for me to leave my old pen and paper because for me, I'm one of those people where I remember things much easier when I actually write it down. Typing it on a computer doesn't do the same thing for me. But you can have an iPad with the new notes where you can actually write perfectly with it and write your notes. So you can have that experience on digital now with the new technology. Right. I, I know. I get it. I understand. But I like pen and paper. That's what I like. So I know it's it's a it's a shift. I'm slowly but surely getting there. So thank you for that tip, because I. You know, I do know these things and I know that I have to do it. So that's on my to-do list. <laughs> yeah. I've been experimenting with the writing because I do like write notes, but I definitely like having them in digital later for editing, reviewing. To have, so I can have it on my phone and be, be portable anywhere I go. So I did experiment with an app called um, GoodNotes. And every time I went to JT's uh, conferences or something, I was writing the notes in that notebook in my iPad. And I did not have a happy experience with that. Oh. And um, oh. meaning, you know, it was hard, right? It was hard. It was not so responsive. But I'm still exploring it. I'm not le leaving it behind because I don't want to use paper. <laughs> I really, I love, you know what? It's interesting because I do, I know what you're saying. I love the paper. I love I the, the I love, you know, yes. artis artisanal paper. Oh, my yes. God. Notebooks, those are beautiful. Yes. I love yes. it. That's uh, yes. I, I love, love it. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I really don't want to cut trees for that. I really don't. <laughs> I know it's ah, oh, it's such a conundrum. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to cut trees. I know maybe there's a balance between you know the batteries on the phone that also do you know damage. But exactly, you know, I, think, I think we need to explore hemp. We need to get to that world of hemp paper. Back to that. <laughs> yeah. So in, yep. anyway, yes. Yeah, so right. I tried to, you know, I, I'm, I'm very into zero waste. Right. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to waste paper. Because I know after you write it, then it's going to accumulate. You're going to throw it away. Whereas digital, it just stays on my phone forever. So I am a big geeky thing for having everything <laughs> on the phone. My phone is my life. Right. right. I have. Um, of course, definitely, you can use the digital world. Now that you have iPhone, when iPhone when the iPhones came out, I was just so excited, you know, to have reminders and calendars and things. I was using, I was the first one, I was using a, um, a card before iPhone. I was using things similar to iPhone because we were using PDAs for clinical trials in the company before iPhone got launched with a Palm 
the trio right. and all kind of old technology. And at the time, so I was using already the Palm Pilots, you know, as my PDA for all my contacts for forever yeah. and the calendar and the to do. Yeah. So I was on that train already before iPhone came. And sure. even before that, before the Palm Pilot came, there, there were some a company called Rex It's from Rex and they build and I have it. I have the Rex. It's a the size. And this is something IBM bought it and killed it. So it's the size of a credit card. And it was this size. Uh-huh. Thin like a credit card, you can put it in a uh, in a slot in the computer, uh-huh. and it had all the contacts. It was touch screen, and you can go to the contacts, the calendar, and the notes. Right. And I, I have that. I still have it. I should uh-huh. just don't have it with me right now, but I I keep it just for my own thing. Sure, sure. <laughs> it was an amazing product, and they killed it because it was such a competition with a new thing. But it was amazing. This is in the nineties. Right. Right. So and, uh, I am all over that to know yeah. <laughs> organizing life. Right. I know. And, and that's let's. And I think this is a perfect segue because although we have so many things in common, this is definitely an area where I am just, I am not a tech person, but this is what you teach with your business. So before I let you go, because I know, you know, time are, we're all really busy. We've got things to do. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But before we do, if you could just sort of tell us, you know, your business is, or one of the businesses is the, the success of automating your business. Um, besides what we just talked about, do you have you know, one or two tips that you could share for our viewers and how they can reach you if they're looking to do exactly what you can show them to do? Well, depending on the level of where they are in their business, right? But if you are a solopreneur and you're launching your business, you better have automated ways to, like automated and, and ready to go ways to have sales, to have, invoices to invoice people so what does a business need sales right a business grows because it needs more clients so if you have an automated system for billing for sending the quotes and invoices that's a really good one okay that's the first thing that needs to be done before so when i launch my coaching business the first thing is i automated all my paper links so that when somebody says uh, okay, I'm ready to do a session for coaching. I just send them the link. Right. With the invoice is already done. I did do it in PayPal and then boom, here, you can pay. So that's the first thing. You want to grow, you want to sell, right? That's the thing. Right. The second thing that they, I would automate is I would definitely use the chat in your social media to automate responses. And to you, you can use open chat, you can use a or open AI with chat GPT, or you can do the own already included automation for meta that includes Facebook chat and Instagram chat, uh, auto response for your email, for your Instagram, for your Facebook, for your TikTok, for your LinkedIn. If you don't have an autom- automatic response, doesn't matter if people say, oh, this is so annoying. Like, doesn't matter. Just tell them, I love the chat but I would love to hear your voice better. Contact me, book a call, book a call, book a call. So that is another thing that you can automate very easily. And that also leads to sales. So everything you have to think about what is making you money and not what, and and try to delay the things that are costing you money. So if you do that, uh, those two tips, you know, should be enough to get you going. If you're a sole entrepreneur, you're just launching. Right. If you are already in the million dollar kind of business, definitely, you know, go into ads, see how you can maximize the ad spent and maximize the digital ad and the marketing, because mm-hmm. that definitely can give you a lot of leads to, um, to, for sales. Sure. Excellent. Great. And how do people connect with you in case they're looking for someone with your expertise? So if you want to book a call with me, it's very easy. You just go into Neni Chasin, like you just omit the Carolina and Neni Chasin. I'm on social media on Instagram. 
I am on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on TikTok, every single platform, YouTube, um, Nanny Chasin, and uh, you can connect me there and just send me a message and I'll respond right away and just book a call. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Nanny. Thank you. I really always enjoy our conversations. Before I let you go, is there anything that you would like to leave all our viewers and our listeners with? Just something that is uniquely, you know, uniquely you, you're a, a piece of advice, life or business, whatever it is, whatever you want them to remember you by. Yeah, well, one thing that I've been really, it's been really in my mind this this particular week um, the is to not waste your time and that know that life is very, very short. I know it could be like, I'm not trying to tell you that, you know, this is like a bad news or anything. It's just life in the context of everything is really very short. And so do whatever is fulfilling you, whatever is on purpose. Like if you had seven months, seven weeks, seven days, what would be the things that you give priority to? And then observe that, make a list, and then take an action on those things. What And observe what are you interested in? What are your your choices when you when you look at, seven days, seven weeks, seven months. And it might give you a lot of insight. And I've been thinking about that because I have some friends that are, that have died and actually are in the coast, like are terminally ill. So in my own um, mortality, I faced it many times. So I just wanted to leave with that advice. If you're doing a business, make sure that that's exactly what you need to do right now. And do all the actions that you need to do for it and for the future so that when you're not here, we can get what you're here for. You can fulfill your purpose and we can get what you're here for. Perfect. Thank you again, Nenny. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I will see you soon. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon at some point. We will get together again because every time I talk to you, I learn something new you know, that I could implement in my life. I love this last bit of advice. I, I too, you know, have lost some people that I care about and someone else is sick. And I, it does make you want to take stock of your life and what, what choices you're making. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Give priority to the things that you gave priority in that reflection and you'll see something different in your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll see you soon. Thank you.